we are increasingly understanding that climate change is a global issue. And, and therefore, being global, you don't have any single agent uh, somewhere that can uh, uh, solve it. Uh, you need to accept that because it is a global phenomenon, you need global cooperation and you need global coordination. And of course, you need it among the community of central banks, and that's what we are doing with the uh, NGFET. But you need also cooperation with national governments, with treasuries, with development banks with regulators, with the private financial sector, with uh, standard setters, uh, with international financial uh, institutions. And of course, you need uh, uh, to, to sort of enroll into this uh, uh, goodwill of cooperation, the whole private sector and uh, uh, civil uh, uh, society. And uh, precisely what I was referring to as growing social uh, awareness might trigger this uh, institutional cooperation and progress because of the increased acceptance that green swans are so severe events that you need really to accept uh, to work differently and you need to insure yourselves against these types of, uh, of uh, risks. And, and this, is, this is beginning to, to, to happen. I mean, uh, uh, you can see that uh, even if in some areas of the globe, uh, you have problems of uh, uh, the uh, unavailability now of, uh, of insurance. Uh, you have uh, zones that have been so devastated by these extreme uh, weather events, red zones, that the risk is becoming too high for uh, insurance companies and it's not diversifiable anymore. So therefore, you, you sort of are in a situation where you need to sort of uh, work public policies differently. Now, the good news is that you still have uh, awareness that uh, uh, people are realizing that uh, if you cooperate, uh, even if you pay a small cost for insuring uh, yourselves against green swans, there are huge benefits that can be derived from, from that. And one good example of that is the uh, a result of the uh, 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 tragedy of the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004, where you did not have an early warning system, and therefore you had, as you may remember, this very tragic event with uh, thousands and thousands of people dying and, and, and huge uh, uh, material damages. But now you do have an early warning system in place, and with a relatively small investment, which is a, a sort of a, uh, the insurance I was referring to, uh, you can sort of have early warning systems that prevents you from getting again into this kind of uh, uh, catastrophe. And this is uh, uh, all the most important because uh, we know that climate change has very negative distributional consequences. It affects primarily poor countries and it affects uh, essentially poor households. In, in rich uh, countries. And, and this is natural because uh, uh, in, in, in poor countries, of course, you have this idea uh, that I referred to before of the uh, parts of, uh, of the land that will become uh, uh, too hot to, to uh, produce any agricultural output or to live. And in rich countries, you do have essentially poor households that will face more difficulties to adapt themselves to these uh, new types of uh, uh, green consumptions. Uh, they, they will have more difficulties in borrowing for uh, transitioning away from old technologies to new technologies and so on and so forth. And therefore we have, when we look at uh, policies that, um, ref uh, that uh, address uh, climate change related risks, we need to think of the uh, distributional consequences of these policies because they tend to affect more dramatically uh, poor households in, in our uh, uh, societies. Uh, just a simulation of uh, uh, showing this, uh, you have models that have been run. Uh, the graph on the left pictures the effects on GDP, on growth uh, of GDP per capita across the various uh, uh, deciles. Uh, of uh, the distribution in, uh, in, in, uh, in our societies. And you can see that uh, these negative effects 
uh, of climate change, they have a much more uh, contractionary negative effects in the poor households of the distribution that are more on the left of, of the deciles rather than on the more wealthy ones that are more on the right of this, ra of this graph. And this is because of, let's say, these uh, multi-dimension uh, 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 elements of inequality that you can have in the uh, graph on the, on the right because poor people are more exposed to climate hazards. They, they, they cannot adapt uh, fast enough. They have less ability uh, to cope with, uh, with uh, uh, dramatic uh, weather events, and therefore they suffer a disproportional loss in terms of their assets and their income. And of course, this creates a spiral of inequality for these types of, uh, of events. And um, this is just an illustration of that, the fact that you need to consider these distributional consequence of, uh, of uh, climate change uh, uh, events, particularly in the uh, official development assistance, ODA. You have here the, uh, the percentage of um, uh, environmental ODA as a percentage of total ODA. I think it's important to remember advanced economies and, and, and countries that are wealthier that they need in their policies for development assistance to consider these distributional consequences of uh, climate change. Now, let me move to the uh, sort of first uh, type of policy implication for uh, uh, addressing green swans. And uh, uh, one of them is green uh, finance. I think we realize that the private sector has a role important in, uh, in green financing and uh, particularly when it addresses climate change, but also COVID-19, there are a number of uh, new uh, green financing instruments that can be uh, mobilized. Uh, and, and, and everybody, I think, particularly the private sector, but also the, the public sector, is very attentive to, let's say, preferences of uh, investors that are triggered by cl climate change. And, and they are all sort of uh, working together, participating in, in improving the greenness of these new financial instruments. Think of this as improving the taxonomy of uh, ESG criteria in portfolios, as strengthening the uh, research uh, partnership with uh, the public sector uh, to develop the, uh, better, stronger, more efficient uh, green uh, uh, technologies. And I think what, what we can sort of say is that uh, uh, many uh, firms, many uh, uh, leaders in the private sector are precisely learning from the, the COVID-19 and, and understanding that our, our societies need to become more, more resilient. We, we need to understand better the, the alternatives to, to sort of being subject to the, the vulnerability of uh, uh, climate change, and including by, by looking at the location of uh, our production plants, by, by looking at, let's say, the, uh, the carbon content of the products that, uh, that, we, uh, that we offer. And one, one promising way uh, that has been used is uh, what uh, is called green bonds. You know that green bonds are financial instruments uh, whose proceeds need to be in line uh, with uh, um, uh, financing uh, climate uh, change uh, uh, mitigation uh, policies. They, they need to respond to a certain number of principles. You can see that the outstanding uh, amount of green bonds uh, on the uh, left is growing. It's uh, not reaching yet a trillion, a trillion dollars, so it's relatively small vis-a-vis -vis the overall size of the bond market, but, but you can see that it, it has been growing quite significantly. The, the, uh, the BIS, where I work, uh, is also uh, using uh, green bonds uh, as a tool for having uh, our clients, our, our central bank uh, community uh, members investing in, uh, in our uh, green uh, 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 BIS uh, uh, pool. Uh, uh, there's been a number of, uh, uh, of our uh, uh, um, <clears throat> central bank uh, colleagues that have been paying increasing attention to the way in which these pools of uh, green bonds can be useful for managing 
uh, their uh, reserves. And we are even sort of improving the taxonomy by looking not only at uh, green bonds in terms of the classification of uh, their effects or their usage by, at the project level, which is the, the current uh, definition of a, a green bond. The proceed needs to be used for a project that fights climate change, but also overall at the firm level, uh, what would be the sort of the, the score of a firm uh, in terms of uh, 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 being a green bond uh, uh, issuer. This is work ongoing at, at the BIS. The, the other promising thing is that you have a number of technological uh, research that is going on uh, in terms of uh, changing the costs in energy production. And, and you can observe in this graph the relative costs of a variety of alternatives to fos fossil fuels, uh, nuclear, uh, uh, gas, uh, uh, also uh, wind and, and solar. And you can see that uh, the relative costs of uh, 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 alternative energies or renewable energies is really dropping vis-a-vis -vis the traditional uh, uh, fossil fuels uh, energy. So it gives some hope that we will begin also being capable on a supply side to uh, shift for, from uh, 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 non-renewable oil-based to renewable uh, sources of uh, uh, energy uh, production. And, and, and you have also, as a promising uh, uh, way forward, a number of private sector companies that are undertaking a variety of climate change related actions. Here, here you have uh, the uh, about 7,000 companies and the number of, let's say, actions in terms of disclosure of their uh, uh, assets in terms of the carbon content. We have also companies that have adopted targets and we have companies that have adopted policies to reduce their emission of uh, 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 greenhouse uh, gases. And this is ranked uh, by, by sectors from agricultural on the top of this graph to, let's say, at the bottom, uh, finance. And you can see, for example, at the bottom that the finance sector, which is uh, uh, represented in, I think it's the uh, fourth line from the bottom, has a significant number of uh, disclosure policies, of uh, uh, targets, and also of policies to reduce uh, greenhouse uh, uh, gas uh, emissions. So this is also movement that is happening together with, let's say, the adoption increasingly of uh, environmental, social, and corporate governance criteria to rank assets, which provides also an opportunity. Uh, it's, a, it's a much bigger market than the green bond uh, market. It's a, it's a global 30 trillion uh, market, and of course, uh, investors can see the rankings of what they are buying vis-a-vis -vis these types of uh, uh, criteria. Even if it is not, let's say, a, a unique solution, it allows investors to be more selective and to choose companies according to uh, ESG uh, criteria. You can also see that the number of carbon initiatives, uh, these, these are the share uh, of uh, global uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions that are covered uh, by, by carbon uh, initiatives. These are, at the same time, carbon tax and um, uh, emission trading schemes. You have about 61 actions covering now more than 20% of total greenhouse gas uh, emissions. So this is also uh, progress. Last but not the least, central banks have also uh, developing, have been developing a broad green uh, agenda. Uh, of course, uh, as you can imagine, there are several uh, uh, topics, debates, uh, there is no uh, a full consensus about uh, uh, all this, but there are, let's say, issues that have been discussed and I think are very useful, in, in particular at the level of the uh, network for greening the financial uh, system in terms of uh, what type of uh, uh, greenness monetary policy can, uh, can, um, can accommodate in terms of collateral, in terms of uh, uh, asset purchase programs, in terms of uh, 
standing facilities for specific uh, sectors. Of course, in terms of regulation and financial uh, stability, this would be a sort of ways in which if you identify a, a systemic risk, you, you, you need to sort of identify what type of uh, micro and macro prudential instrument uh, you, can, you can think of. And of course, there are some central banks that are even thinking of even more uh, uh, aggressive direct policies to address uh, climate change, such as direct financing scheme, uh, or even, let's say, uh, uh, the, the ways in which uh, uh, pension funds in the central banks and reserve management policies can favor more uh, green bonds and so on and, and so forth. Now, uh, in, in, uh, in our book, The Green Swan, we sort of say, yes, this is useful, but uh, we cannot consider again that the central banks would be the sort of uh, the savior of the day and that uh, they should be the only... Uh, climate change game in, in, in town, and therefore we want to organize the discussion where uh, uh, <clears throat> everybody uh, needs to uh, chip in. As I mentioned before, this is a game of coordination, and that, that's why <clears throat> the central bank community is really working very hard on, at the AG, NGFS, but also discussing very, uh, very pragmatically uh, the, the various types of approach that uh, each uh, member of the community uh, should, uh, should consider. Uh, should, should it be more, more aggressive in intervention or should it sort of be precisely in order to, pre to uh, preserve the independence of central bank, which is an important element of credibility of, uh, of interventions, a sort of separation between what it can do for financial stability and the inclusion of uh, additional uh, objectives in terms of the mandates of, uh, of, uh, of central bank. And overall, I think there is a sense that in any event, uh, these discussions are very constructive and these discussions are, are probably ending with a sort of um, a, a mixture of uh, approaches that would sort of enhance coordination of what central banks are doing with fiscal policy, of course, because we, you need to activate this very important element, carbon tax, public investment, and also, as I mentioned before, private sector and uh, civil uh, society. Finally, let me, let me sort of look into the challenges and opportunities for uh, using the green recovery to fight uh, climate, uh, climate change. I think some, some may say, look, um, yes, it's important to think of a green recovery. You, you say that uh, this is a topic that has been a very prominent in, uh, in many uh, uh, ways. Uh, the, um, the, the exit from the COVID-19 crisis uh, has been uh, uh, publicized in, the, in, the, uh, in declarations and the press. And you should sort of uh, consider that if there is a crisis, use it to sort of uh, uh, make progress in this, in this topic. But I'm sure that um, you can realize also that um, there are difficulties. If the, if the crisis is so severe uh, that maybe it's, it, it might be a bit uh, uh, difficult to add an additional challenge to the, uh, to the recovery. You, you have certainly a, a lot of uh, uncertainty vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the shape of this recovery, not to add uh, a different element that would make things perhaps a little bit uh, more, more complicated. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think there are many that are saying, look, um, we, we, we are so much now more aware of the uh, consequences of climate change that we, you really need to sort of uh, consider uh, that uh, this is a unique opportunity to exit from the COVID-19 crisis and at the same time not to waste it and to sort of work very hard towards uh, uh, triggering the uh, elements uh, in the recovery that will allow us to move towards a uh, lower uh, carbon uh, economy, both by actions on the supply side and also on the demand side uh, of the policies uh, of, the, uh, of the recovery. And of course, you, you can say, look, 
the, the trade-offs are relatively clear in this little uh, uh, matrix. You, you can sort of uh, either construct a recovery program with a bit more uh, uh, emphasis on consumptions or uh, on uh, investment, the pink uh, uh, column or the blue column, and you can sort of construct the recovery using a bit more brown goods and services readily available or using at the bottom more <clears throat> or betting on more green uh, goods and services in, in the recovery. And you can see in the quadrants of this matrix that each of these alternatives have pros and, and, and cons. I mean, if you think of, for example, the idea situation where uh, you, you uh, use more investment and you use uh, more green goods and, and services, of course it would create uh, 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 it, it might create a virtual uh, circle for in innovative industries, but it, it might take a little bit more time. So uh, how you, would you cope with this uh, uh, time uh, inconsistency uh, when you need a fast recovery? And who is going to be financing the, these new uh, investments? If you want a sort of a, a graphical illustration of the trade-off, uh, this is, let's say, a, a view where uh, if you are uh, focusing on, let's say, recovering fast, and if you need to sort of uh, really look at, uh, uh, at the speed of the recovery uh, above anything else, then perhaps, yes, a brownish recovery might be faster, uh, and you sort of pay uh, less attention to the green contact of, of the uh, recovery, which is the sort of... Uh, the shape, the, the dotted line in the recovery. This graph portrays, let's say, the, uh, the growth uh, of, of GDP before, of course, I mean, the fall that is due to COVID-19 uh, and then the sort of recovery in which we are. And then what are would be the alternatives, either a greener recovery or a sort of a more brownish recovery to get us out of, uh, uh, of, the, of the crisis. Now, you can also have this other view, which is, yes, perhaps it is difficult, but if you sort of, uh, if you are capable of mobilizing the financing for this transition in terms of uh, uh, strategies to mitigate and to adapt our societies towards a lower carbon economy, you can at the same time get the recovery, but have a recovery that is even more expansionary than the brownish one, because you will sort of having the, pos the possibility to financing to trigger uh, investments, productivity gains, uh, new pra practices, new types of processes, and so on and so forth. And this is the illustration of the same graph when you push the dotted line of the first type of uh, green uh, recovery to a sort of second type of that is much stronger in investments, much stronger in alternatives, to precisely get more productivity and faster growth. So this, this would be a sort of the ideal uh, situation. Uh, is it possible where well, you have some studies, precisely the one that uh, was led by Nick Stern and Joe uh, Stiglitz and the University of Oxford that portrays in this uh, little graph uh, the uh, types of policies that you can mobilize for the recovery. Uh, uh, these are the little dots that you have in this graph according to two axes. The x-axis is the uh, uh, multipliers, the sort of the multipliers of activities that these policies might have. And on the y-axis, the potential of these policies to uh, trigger a positive change in, in climate. Uh, and, and of course, the ideal situation is to be in the northeast quadrant of these policies, which combines at the same time high positive impact for the climate and high uh, fiscal multiplier, meaning that it triggers more activity, more employment, more business, right? And if you look at, let's say, where, what could these policies be? The policies would be the Y, T, Xs in the Northeast Quadrant. You can see that they are precisely policies related to investment in green infrastructure, policies related to investment in clean energy, 
policies related to uh, increase the spending in R&D technology for green and so on and so forth. So, so these would be the sort of the candidates for having at the same time a fast green recovery and at the same time a recovery that would trigger uh, activity, employment, and of course uh, uh, distribution of, 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 of income. And this is confirmed by another study by the OECD that looks at what, what sort of uh, uh, green content the recovery that have been uh, put in place by uh, OECD countries have been, uh, have been uh, uh, characterized by. And you can see that uh, in this table, you have by sector, energy, aviation, and so on and so forth, the type of policies that have been put in place, tax reduction, R&D subsidies, and so on and so forth. And you can see that, of course, the, the ones that have the, the, the most green impacts are the ones that relate to the energy and the transportation uh, uh, sector. Uh, these are, again, uh, for the, from the same study of the OECD, uh, the, the, the types of uh, R&D environmental uh, spending vis-a-vis -vis, uh, total spending in R&D by, by countries. You can see that we, we can certainly improve, uh, improve that. We can certainly learn from the studies that I mentioned uh, before. And you can certainly uh, hear these are the sort of the, uh, the, the uh, percentage of uh, fossil fuel support or, or subsidies, if you wish, as a percentage of GDP. And this would be the opposite. I mean, you can certainly learn that one of the first things to do in, the, in this uh, recovery and these policies would be to consider the uh, elimination of these uh, 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 subsidies. So in conclusion, uh, if you think of green swans as global uh, risks, uh, you need to look at solutions as uh, global coordination issues. Everybody should take place uh, in uh, take a place in the action, and uh, the action should be uh, immediate. Uh, the message of uh, of the book and the message of uh, of uh, the people that uh, we've been working with in the community of central banks, but also in governments, in the private sector, uh, in IFIs, uh, is that anyone everyone should sort of uh, be part of, uh, of, uh, of these initiatives. Uh, the, the, the solution requires a combination of supply and demand policies because you need the technology to change the ways in which supply uh, operates, but you need also behavioral change on the demand side. And of course, it has to do with this combination of incentives, of prices, and also of policies. And, uh, the, the, the solution indeed calls for immediate action because of the severity of, uh, of the events that uh, we are witnessing. I, I don't think anyone now is unaware of the increasing risks that uh, climate change is, is posing to uh, our economic systems, our societies, uh, the, the way in which we live, and also the stability uh, of, uh, of our society. So, so there is now uh, uh, this sort of uh, call for action and to consider uh, work uh, and also to consider, uh, let's say, overcoming the, uh, what, what was called the tragedy of the horizon, which is our, our, our lack of capacity to consider because the, the event was so distant to take immediate action uh, now. And of course, uh, the, the other, the other ways in which we, we, are be, we continue to be working is to uh, sort of uh, work on the policies to uh, precisely uh, mitigate the, these risks. We have to improve the way in which we consider systemic risk. We, we need to improve the information of consumers, uh, the, the way in which they look at the price of products and they see the carbon content of that to uh, a way in which uh, uh, carbon pricing uh, takes place at, uh, at a sufficiently meaningful uh, level. Uh, we need, of course, to propose new products for investors. I mean, uh, you see that there is an interest in diversifying portfolios. We need to offer them the way in which they can see uh, that uh, they invest in products that uh, have a lower carbon uh, content. And last but not the least, we need to look at the distributional consequences, as I said, 
of the policies that we put in place, because sometimes we want to do good, but we don't sort of necessarily measure that uh, uh, these policies might have a short-term impact on poor people in rich countries and also on poor countries. And therefore, you need to consider policies of transfers, policies of, let's say, mitigating these uh, adverse distributional consequences so that you can make uh, the, the policies to uh, fight uh, climate change, uh, both coordinated, but also have a, a component of, uh, of social uh, stability uh, uh, as well. I, I stop here and I thank you very much for your attention to this presentation. Thank you.